Welcome to Grey Primer, a show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this episode I'm going to be looking at the top 10 hobby products I found on the internet. I will look at a game that is a spin-off to my favorite board game of all time, Blood Bowl. The spin-off is Dungeon Bowl. Only in its second edition, the last time this thing hit shelves was 1989. And if you like your fantasy football played with like a spiked ball with exploding treasure chests and teleports bouncing you all around the place, you've had a long time to wait for an update to that edition. But it's finally here, let's just see if the wait was worth it. And if you hang on to the end of the video, you can see how you could be in with a chance of winning in my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so and you can like and share and comment and do all the things. And while you're doing that, I'll play some music. But before we get down and dirty in Dungeon Bowl, let's look at the top 10 hobby products I found on the internet. At number 10 is AK Interactive's official apron. This hard wearing apron will help to protect your clothes and there are some pockets for storing tools and snacks. At nine is Green Stuff World's 10 professional sculpting tools and these stainless steel sculpting tools feature 20 different tips and come in a handy case. AK Interactive's Punching Leaves Sheet Set is at number eight. Four double-sided sheets are perfect for creating realistic looking leaves for any season. At seven is Raging Hero's Red Riding Hood Werewolf Slayer. Her favorite line is, you know my dear, it isn't safe for a werewolf to walk these woods alone. At six is High Tech Miniatures Archfather, and there's no official Games Workshop miniature for the Emperor of Mankind but this is a pretty impressive proxy. This Battle Sisters Armored Walker has lots of options for armament and posing, and for an extra fiver, you can add a pipe organ and militant organist to the top. At four is Hardcore Miniatures Orc Biker Boss on foot. It's the first orc I've seen with cool hair, but is definitely rocking the whole road warrior look. At three is Ramshackle Games Minimus Squats Bounty Hunter Crew. This large resin set for Imperial Guard Squats has tanks, support vehicles, bikers, and infantry. In the runner-up spot is the Liberty Walker from RTLW. It's a glorious grot mech with several build options. This is a majestic centerpiece for your green skin army. This episode's number one is the Joy Toy Ultramarines and Victor Tactical Warsuit. It's scaled to match the other Joy Toy Warhammer 40,000 action figures, which makes this colossal toy over a foot tall and weighing in at over a kilo. We now return to our featured content. I had to kick off this review with an image of the original instruction manual for Dungeon Bowl and it's got that great black and white art. Actually the whole thing is black and white. Let me just zoom out here for you. Like look at this thing. It's only 16 pages long. I think everything that was uh, featured in this rulebook was in various issues of White Dwarf which was kind of interesting. And um, yeah, I mean, you, ha you have it all here. You have the fundamentals of the new version of Dungeon Bowl all through throwing rules that are different. You know, you can bounce it off the walls. A little bit of lore about the wizard's colleges. It's kind of, you know, just one page. I would have hoped that there would have been a bit more to it. I think I certainly wanted more when this first came out. A nice little bit about expanding the game. You can go and buy Games Workshop's dungeon floor plans, which at the time I think was about 10 pounds, uh, to increase the size of the playing area. Uh, hopefully there's gonna be some instruction about expanding the game in this version of Dungeon Bowl. Uh, I don't think there's anything to stop you going out and buying whatever dungeon plans you want. You could print your own, you could draw them on a piece of paper. And that's it. All right, so Dungeon Bowl, a game of subterranean Blood Bowl mayhem. Uh, the original game, as you saw there, had dwarfs and elves. There was just one sculpt for each. There was one dwarf repeated, I can't remember how many times, like 16 times, and one elf similarly repeated. So here we have the new box. It's nice and shiny. And then on the back, we have all of the juicy details. You've got double-sided dungeon tiles. You have instructions here on needing glue and tools. And uh, yeah, examples of the two colleges that are included, the shadow team and the fire team, chests, portals, and yeah, let's, let's have a look. Now this is an interesting color that <laughs> I haven't seen as uh, spruce in it. Oh wow, and a, like a purpley one there as well. 
That's kind of neat. This looks like the standard sprue that comes with Blood Bowl with the uh, scatter marker here. And then I think this is the touchline marker in the shape of a football helmet. Uh, then you have the two part through a uh, ruler. And this in Dungeon Bowl, uh, the original version, I don't think you were able to ever throw like a long bomb, which is a, a four, uh, just because the ceiling was too low. So as far as I know, this is the only unique sprue in this box. Everything else is available in other team boxes, but I'll get to that. This includes the portals and the chests as well. So on the portals there, you can just about see the little Roman numeral one. You got two, three, and then up to four, five, six. I think what I'll do is put a larger number in the center of this swirling vortex so that at a glance I can tell uh, where the various portals are when I roll a d6 because otherwise I think it would just be uh, a lot of sort of squinting at the board. In an ideal world, I would have preferred them to have created unique miniatures for this set. I think that would have sat better with me um, because it is quite an expensive kit. But the way they've done it, you do get a sample of four different teams that are available separately for Blood Bowl. You're just getting half of the box in each case, but essentially you have half the pack of Skaven Blight Scramblers, You've got half the pack of Nagaroth Nightwings, half the Dwarf Giants, and half the Fire Mountain Gutbusters. And that's what you have a little taste of when you get uh, your copy of Dungeon Bowl. Uh, divider here will protect the fancy book underneath from the spiky sprues. And on the flip side, you get more exciting products available in the Blood Bowl range. <laughs> uh, Blood Bowl second season, uh, the Sevens pitch, Death Zone, and then I probably their three most recent teams are just some random selection. Elves, Chaos Chosen, and ne Necromantic Horrors. Okay, I'm just going to put the book to one side for a second. This is kind of nice. I like this divider here. Dice here. No logos on them, just apart from the little Blood Bowl one there. Yeah, okay. So two identical double-sided dugouts. I'm sure they could have made one fire and one shadow but hey uh, and then into some tiles themselves as you can see these are all gridded um, except where there is scenery in the way oh cool lava nice I wonder is there an ability to jump across there that'd be kind of cool I know with the, the pits the spiked pits and stuff in the first version you could um, jump over the pits is that a dragon really can you have rules for the dragon? Nice. Probably not. Uh, and then these are all punch ones, I think. So there's some scratches on these. I wonder how easily this marks. Ooh. You can, you can see that. I don't even need to zoom in. Like, these mark super easy. Uh, they'll probably get a bit dinged up. They also look kind of um, subdued, like low saturation or something. Maybe that's just the, the palette they're going for, it being underground and all. Uh, but definitely subdued detail. Um, it doesn't help that they're not laminated. Sometimes lamination can uh, make the sort of the, the colors and the uh, dividing lines and stuff like that pop. But these uh, feel, yeah, a little underwhelming. And into the next lot. Oh, this is great. Looks like a halfling tea party right there in the middle of that room. Uh, some nice sort of um, spectral effects here. And yeah, very different designs on the other sides as well. I'm a little concerned that those are not really popping, that they're just a bit flat. I'm just gonna open the book here. Before I go to the book, I just want to show you a direct comparison with another Games Workshop product to show you what I mean about this being so flat and subdued. Here's Dungeon Bowl, and underneath here is Curse City. I mean, look how punchy that is. It's really, really crisp, vibrant colors, incredibly interesting to look at. You know, it still feels like a dungeon. It still feels like you're in some subterranean crypt there and and uh, treasure hordes and all of that stuff. And on the flip side, it doesn't get any less detailed. 
And there's even a cool flipped over coffin there and, and blood smears and all these great statues and let's look at this garden around this tomb. And here's even more. Look, I'm playing Dungeon Ball on this. I don't care. <laughs> I, I am not going to play it on those flat tiles. I mean, they're fine, but this is just so much better. And it's great to hear that this is getting a relaunch this year because when I did the unbox and the miniatures review, uh, I'll put a link into the show notes below. When I did that, I was just like saying that this is a kit that should be available to everyone because the miniatures were some of the best I'd ever seen. And uh, yeah, check out the review anyway that I did. I'll give you an early heads up if you don't know already as to what you're going to get in Cursed City. Um, this is part of it, obviously. But yeah, this is what I'll be playing my games of Blood Bowl on. Um, vibrant, colorful, really interesting. Then the construction book is... Um, yeah, it's a little underwhelming, but really what more do you need? I do like full color guides. I think it's really useful to see where the glue points and everything are. Uh, especially for someone who maybe is new to this, who's got Dungeon Bowl for a Christmas gift and they've never constructed miniatures. Uh, you, you do get sort of a, a rough idea of the tools and things here. And, and there's, of course, plenty of instructional stuff online. Uh, but yeah, this is um, a little basic for me. I, I would have liked to have seen a bit of color in this, uh, especially, again, with the cost of the, the box set. English language rule book. it is um, kind of like a, a flat matte look to it. I don't mind that. That's kind of classy looking. Same deal on the front. It's a, I don't want to break the spine here, but it is a wraparound cover, uh, repeating what looks like the cover art from the box. Yeah, it is. And, oh, the little uh, ribbon has just come out to say hello. And the branding elements here and the titling and stuff has got that glossy finish. Hopefully you can see it just shine in there against the matte background. That's always really nice. And up top we have the Dungeon Ball logo, which is not centered. Okay, so the spacing here and here is right. But up top the actual, huh. Well, that's curious. <laughs> it looks like it just needs a, a nudge this way a little bit. Um, that's bizarre. You think somebody would have spotted that. And you would also think that somebody would have selected these three elements and center balanced them to the background. Because they haven't. The, where it says the official rules there is higher. That's just weird. And Curse City also had a similar mistake. It was on its actual box details. It said on the, I think it was on the back of the box, for two or more players uh, and then across from that on the same box it said for one to four players which is the correct number but for two premium releases Curse City and now Dungeon Bowl it feels like there's that little attention to detail that final copy edit that final design edit maybe a, a shortcut is happening or there's just too much pressure too much speed being put on the design team because uh, yeah that just seems so obvious to me. Um, maybe I'm just being pedantic. Well, I'm obviously being pedantic. Anyway, <laughs> uh, here we go. This is nice. And we get the College of Fire, the Blazing Axes here. Oh, that's the team name. Cool. And then we're into uh, Jim and Bob, given their breakdown. And we have the game of Dungeon Bowl. Uh, it just tells us everything that's included oh cool i thought i just sort of glimpsed forward and i saw all the different colleges there so that's kind of neat and then it goes down into all the different um rooms and things so there are some interesting names for these rooms the fiery chasm dragon younglings lair and maybe if there's some kind of special rules for these rooms that might bring me back over to the dungeon bowl tiles uh, but yeah all of the normal things here, rules and regulations, general principles, and if you're familiar with Blood Bowl, there probably won't be a m much new stuff here. Um, I think where you're going to notice the main differences are the sort of the, the special events like hopping into teleports or 
uh, the way you can bounce the ball off the walls, things like that. Uh, team draft list. Artwork is nice. Um, we've got... Oh, I love these things. The Roll of Honor showing all the teams who uh, won Dungeon Bowl previously. Heavens. Beasts. Life. Death. Light. <laughs> um, metal. Oh, yeah. What's in the metal team? Goblins, humans, and orcs. Ah, oh, how much do I love that. Um, shadow here. Fire. Skills and traits will take up a lot of space. Oh, there are special rules for the rooms. Well, that changes everything. Okay, that's just so cool. But I'm sure I can make up my own rules for the Cursed City rooms. <laughs> Okay, so the only reference I can find in the original rules to the current cup holders is 2489, uh, the Blood Axes, uh, the dwarf team who represent the Bright Wizards. So I don't know if these teams on the back, it'll go back that far. 2489, Blazing Axes, what was it? The Blood Axes, okay, it's it's close enough. Maybe there was an IP conflict with um, Blood Axes and they renamed them um, the Blazing Axes, but it's close enough. I, I can dig that. That's it, uh, lots of rules, considering that <laughs> this is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like now. Okay, let's go get these minis built and I'll be right back. I managed to find one of the original elves from Dungeon Bowl 1989, and it actually doesn't look too bad, even if it's a lower detail copy of the Metal Blood Bowl elf lineman from the same era. You can also see the original spiked ball, which goes well with the elf's spiky leggings. The dark elves bring us right up to date and have some beautiful and detailed armor. Even if they don't have very dynamic poses, they still look elegant and poised. You can't say that about the Skaven, however, who are sculpted to look fast, aggressive, and angry. You just know they're going to hit hard and leave you applying pressure to fresh wounds. The dwarves are a bit of a miss for me. Some of them just have beards that are way too long. The ogres, however, are glorious, and while I didn't like their faces at first, they're really growing on me. They also have great scope for grot-chucking fun in the dungeons, and the grots themselves are hilarious looking. The treasure chests are very well sculpted and of course identical from the outside so that finding the ball is as fair as possible. And with so many different team sprues included in Dungeon Bowl, you get a bunch of ball types, team markers and coins, which is a really nice surprise. So overall, the minis look great, even if it would have been cool to see unique sculpts for this boxed game. The included dungeon tiles are flat, bit low contrast, and they're easily scratched. So I'd really recommend you shop around for different dungeon tiles or map packs, or you could do what I'm going to do and raid my dungeon crawling board games. The rulebook is a little long, but it's full of nicely drawn art and well crafted lore. Even if the front cover looks like it might have missed a final pass from the quality control team at Games Workshop. Overall, it's a welcome return for a fascinating standalone spin-off of Blood Bowl and great to see it back on the shelves. Personally, I can't wait to have a game of it once the world starts to turn again and I'll definitely be seeing how this plays on Curse City tiles. Hey, maybe I'll combine the dungeon tiles from Curse City and Dungeon Bowl together. I'll have maybe four teams playing. One ball, one end zone, right in the middle of a huge maze. And there'll be a dragon sleeping there who'll eat you if you roll a one as you try to sneak past and score a touchdown. Dungeon Bowl really brings imagination back into fantasy football and I can't wait to give it a go. Before I leave, however, I just want to share details of how you could be in with the chance of winning a prize in my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm giving away some minis, some of my favorite hobby tools, and other very cool things. Simply subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment down below in either this video or the previous one, which featured a Chaos Knight tearing apart an Imperial Guard tank. I'll link to that mechanized madness in the show notes below, but thank you so much for supporting this channel and for watching my content. I appreciate every one of you and I will catch you on the next episode. Take care and bye bye.